So we're going to talk about the Genetic 4 pad. Uh, this is our new pro product. You'll see that we've changed the shin cradle. If you remember in the optic, we had more of a wrap situation with the inner wrap. We had seams divided where it hugged around the back of your calf, but on the inside of the pad, what we've done here, we've made it so your shin's actually going to sit into the shin cradle a little bit more and it'll actually, the pad itself will hug your pad, which is why now we just have the outer wrap for the smart strap. We've got an option here with the knee strap where you can go down here if you like an open knee cradle. You can remove this tab if you're not going to put the strap behind your knee. You can move this strap anywhere you want it. There's been an evolution. The last few years, a lot of goaltenders have really been evolving to wanting an open knee cradle. You can take that knee strap and come down to the calf wrap, open up this area a little bit so it frees it up, but you still have a little bit of pull from the, from the knee stack. So that's why we originally came out with the Smart X strap. We incorporated that all into one strap. So you could just do that. And then again, this was removable so you could take it out. Also coming stock, we have our Pro Knee Stack. So the density of this knee stack, it's rock solid. There's no compression. So we increased some padding in the landing area, made this so it's really, really firm. You can see as a result, we have 90 degrees on our slide surface. Everything stays, this doesn't flare out or flare in at all. Not bad. The other thing too about the seal, you have a really firm, complete seal. You don't get that pull up with the pad. You'll notice like with a lot of pads, sometimes people talk about how it pulls up. Yeah. We really did a nice job with the high density foam. So it really stays flush all the way from toe to the top of the thigh rise. I thought of my, um, my genetics, there's so much pull on the top of that thigh rise. It was wacky. Yep, and this, this we've really eliminated that. With the optic, we eliminated the front flex zones and went with a fly and a flex core. So you had a stiffer core with the fly for the more pure butterfly goaltenders and the flex core for the more hybrid. The genetics always been a traditionally hybrid butterfly style pad. So we brought the flex zones back and what you see here with the TKA, you got your thigh, knee, ankle flexes. So you got a one in the thigh rise, a three, so it's a, a nice flexible core, and, a, and our hyper flex boot, which is real soft. You're gonna see that real soft boot, you're gonna see that nice flex in the core, but you still have a nice stiff thigh rise. So with the stock one thigh rise, this is gonna stay pretty straight, but you get that curve and that nice soft core and it's our torsion technology so you can see how flexible that core is. We still can customize those flex zones. So I still want some more flex in my thigh rise too. So I would customize this as a 444. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're a double break kind of guy, eh? I'm a double break kind of guy. I'm 45 years old, not that flexible anymore. Yeah, you and Corey I can move. Are both, eh? Yep, yep, yep. I don't know the specifics on the specs, if there's anything different on this. It's my understanding that this is just a stock genetic uh, four, but with a single T and a skate lace pocket, but with a unique graphic that told an end design. Ash Palm was something that was on our original Genetic Pro Glove, uh, and we had it on our original uh, import versions of our Genetic line. And then we got away from the Nash and went with all Gen Pro in the palms of the gloves. And we kind of went back with the Genetic 4, back to our roots a little bit with the Nash Palm. Um, it does add a little bit of friction. I mean, that's just science and that it's not a smooth material. So the thought process behind that is, is that you might increase the friction a little bit so when you get pucks that hit it and go into the pocket, you might get a little bit of slowdown. Um, but um, it's also kind of one of those Brian's things. A lot of people who love the genetic line, the original genetic line, asked us for years, why'd you go away from the Nash? Yeah. Um, so we brought back the Nash with the new genetic line, just kind of throw back to the original genetic roots. But from a performance standpoint, it is a little bit softer in that, in that brake closure area. And again, the thought process behind it is, is that you also increases a little bit of friction going into the glove. Oh, those D fives, those are those are really sexy. We obviously have done multiple versions of the eyes. So if you are ordering a custom glove and you want the eyes on it, and that was a lot of people on the optic, we put the optic graphic on the T, but if you want the eyes, you can have the eyes put on there. There's no additional there's no additional charge for that. Is there a name difference between the two or are they all T fives? No, we, 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 haven't, we haven't really named them. Yeah. That might be something down the road if we want to have multiple options, but right now, no. Uh, the gloves are my favorite part of, the, of all the Brian's lineups. Yep. Feel. Well, I mean, we, we take a lot of pride in our gloves. You can't talk about our gloves. 
without talking about the boa. Um, just cable retention system, crank to tighten to get that custom fit, and then you just simply pull up to release. There's no way you can get a better fit in a catch glove with a Velcro strap or a nylon pull cinch strap. You'll notice we opened up the cut here, so it's a little bit more open, easier to grab your water bottle. We also, the big change on this blocker for me from the optic is this pullover strap here. You'll notice it crosses over the boa. On the optic, we didn't have this strap here, which left the boa a little bit exposed. Um, which again, the only way it's going to be exposed is if you're on the ice and opened up because it's yeah. on the back. But the other thing it does is, is it'll keep this sidewall from flaring out at all. And one of the things on our optic, one of the uh, feedback on it of, if I, of anything with the optic blocker, the optic blocker was super light, performs really well, but, so, but the sidewall, people have mentioned you could flare out a little bit. With this pull strap coming across, we've made it so that's not going to happen. Yeah. One thing to uh, talk about, the uh, blocker foams, because I know that you can get different foams for different stiffness in the blocker. Yeah, I mean, you can go with higher density, like if you really want it to pop. One of the things a lot of guys are doing is customizing it with Lexan, or Lexan, the clear plastic. Yep. Um, we can do that, um, but what we found with our high densities, the actual difference you get, we get really good pop off of our blockers. If you add the, it's going to make it heavier, so that's the trade-off. With the heavier? With, with, the the, with a higher density, or if you go with Lexan, it's going to make the blocker heavier. You might get a little more, more pop, yeah. but you're going to trade off that weight. So we shortened down the fingers a little bit in our stock senior palm. So, um, and then we added this new material and the grip gives you a little bit more traction, a little bit more friction. Kind of like a sure grip kind of? It's kind of like a sure grip, yep. And then we have padding on the back of the fingers and then we have a full pad around the index finger. So if you do get a stick that rides up or a puck that sneaks in there, you've got protection on your on your index finger as well. And then finally, when's, <clears throat> when's the uh, floating anchor tee coming to retail? Well, so customization, we do it. We would make it, so if, if a retailer wanted to order floating tees for, for their store models, we'd make it. Uh, floating tees are illegal um, in just about any league that pays attention to those things. For all of us beer leaguers, if we want that extra deepness in the pocket, we can do it. So there's a lot of aftermarket guys that do it, and we just we do it. We just don't have it as a customization on our customizer. If you want a floating tee, you can ask for it, we'll do it for you. It takes Swiss a lot longer to lace a floating tee glove. So it, all of our costs with customization, if you ever customize with Brian's, you know like it's all based on labor. It's all based on how much extra time it adds. So it's no different with a floating tee. If it's gonna take him an extra 45 minutes to an hour to lace a glove, that's gonna be what the cost is associated with that because it, it backs everything up behind it. Yeah. I got to see the Brian's United Four line, obviously the show this weekend. Obviously the last Brian set I was in was my checkerboard set, which was a genetic three blocker and pad, sub zero three glove. I think Brian's makes hands down some if not the best gloves in the market when it comes to just feel and customization and, and all kind of stuff, without a doubt. Obviously not as light as maybe a warrior glove, because I think the warrior stuff is without a doubt the lightest in the market. I was really impressed with the genetic four glove, the Tolvin and Pro Return. To be honest, I'm not sure why he would have returned it because it was just such a nice glove. And it was stock as well, with the exception of the skip-based pocket and the single teeth. Some of the issues that I had in my genetic threes were the, the torsional twisting of the pad and there being so much pull coming out from the thigh rise, seems like they fixed it. Knee blocks seem like they're a lot stiffer from the last generation, which is another complaint that I had. And just the pad overall breaking down. So it seems like Brian's fixed a lot of the problems. Um, will I be ordering a genetic four set anytime soon? Not really. I was supposed to order a Genetic 4 set earlier on this year for my actual college set, but I ended up having some time delays um, as far as getting early access on the Genetic 4s through their college program. Whether your team buys or you buy, if you play college hockey, apparently Brian's will give you a little bit of a discount, kind of get you into the brand because they like to try and take care of some of the guys. So I was supposed to get a Genetic 4 set, it was going to look probably something like this, but that fell through and I ended up going with Warrior and really been happy with my Warriors. So I just did my six month review of the Warriors and I really don't have any reason at all to switch out of them. So. Um, did like the equipment, but won't be switching into it anytime soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sideline swap time.
Oh, this here. SidelineSwap.com is my favorite website. It's my favorite website because it's my favorite website. Sideline Swap is an old high school science fair experiment gone right. It's taking the baking soda and the vinegar, mixing them together, bringing some people with some passion for hockey, some hockey equipment to sell, and bringing you to them. It's a constant fireball of energy. None of this probably makes sense, but it's my way of trying to get you to go to the website and buy something, sign up, and get an account. Go to SidelineSwap.com. I'll see you next week.